Hello and welcome back to Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, James Worthy, Derek Fisher, Mike Bresnahan, pouting outside, but he will be here. His Steelers are absolutely getting rolled. Ali Clifton, Mike Trudell will be handling the post-game interviews. Guys, what a game for the Lakers. Everyone scored 120 points. They dominated from the opening tip. We've wanted fast starts. We got it, James. And defensively, best game of the year. 21 rocket turnovers, 13 steals, 9 blocks. I don't know where you want to start, but what a what an all-around game for the Lakers. Yeah, it was uh, pretty much a complete game. Started out a little sluggish, turned the ball over in the first half, but this is what, this is what it feels like when you're building something. And I think... Uh, you know, the guys are enjoying playing together. Uh, you see the communication. You see, you know, them really enjoying playing the game. But defensively, uh, you know, the, what they were able to do on the fast break, I don't know, 32 points, I think, on wow, the fast that's break. that's another good one, yep. Uh, you know, capitalizing on, on every turnover. And I, I just think their defense is just outstanding. I know we talk about their offense, AD, and what they were able to do. But everything that Houston threw at them, when they had a little comeback, the Lakers took a timeout, and that's what I like about them. They're able to recognize where they are. Game was down to about nine or ten points, then they just turned it on again. Collectively, steals, you know, uh, fast breaks, uh, open shots. They just played a good game. Yeah, you know, ten games in going into tonight, seven and three. Uh, in the pregame, we showed an interview where LeBron talked about, you know, I give the team, you know, B plus, B. You know, yeah. we're doing some good things. But I see an opportunity for us to continue to get better, and we see it as a team. And I feel like they, you know, they turn the, the page from 10 games. All right, let's put that in, in the rearview mirror. This next, you know, five, 10 game set. Let's start to set some new standards. Let's create some new habits. Let's start to raise our level of engagement and really start to put our stamp on what kind of team we can be this season. I like the way you said that level of engagement. They were off to some slow starts, kind of waiting to the fourth quarter to flip the switch. Uh, people questioning the defense a little bit in the, sh in the shot blocking. They completely changed the narrative tonight. 27 points on just 12 shots for AD. He's speaking with Mike Trudell. He's not there yet. We'll go there in a second. Um, 54 bench points, James. That's always been a, 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 a nice asset for the Lakers. You know, they've, they started it last year. The bench came in and produced. And this year, I think, you know, when it started five goals out, they're not really missing anything. In fact, when that second group comes in, things go upward. With, with Montrez going in the paint, Shooter, Kuz is hitting big shots. You know, I, I just really think their bench is second to none. And, you know, they're, they're kind of compatible to a starting team when they put them in there. Fish, I'm going to jump in because he is ready now. 27 points on just uh, 12 shots for AD. He's speaking with Mike Trudell. All right, Anthony Davis. So the last time we heard from you after the Spurs game, you voiced your displeasure about the defensive effort overall and said that you wanted more. Obviously, you didn't get a chance to play in the Bulls game, but it seemed like you really had that going early in this one at AD. Was that important to you to set that tone and try to use leadership in that fashion? Obviously. Um, you know, we got to be able to be a team who, who leads defensively. You know, even, I mean, tonight we made shots, but, you know, every night we're not going to be able to make shots. We can't control that. And, you know, like I said over and over, what we can't control is how we play defense, our energy and effort, and that's what we want to do tonight. You know, I came out with emphasis of, of being aggressive on the defensive end, and um, it kind of trickled down to everybody, um, you know, getting blocks. You know, Taylor had four steals tonight. Um, you know, Trez had some blocks. Braun, so everybody, you know, was just um, on point defensively. Our, our communication was at a high level and coach came in at halftime and told us that our defensive effort was off the charts tonight i mean holding a team like that i think they have 46 points at the half uh, a team who could score and you know we were just flying around and being who we are and and seeing who we can be defensively yeah, 13 steals and eight blocks, and you mentioned it. It started early uh, with you coming in and protecting the rim. On the other side of the floor, AD, you guys also seem to have taken a step up in efficiency. Uh, what are you seeing offensively, and how much can that continue to feed off what you're doing on defense? Yeah, we can, we're constantly learning each other. Um, you know, there's not that much practice time, so we're, we're practicing in games, you know, trying to figure out how we can uh, play with each other. And uh, we, we figured it out a little bit tonight. Uh, you know, Dennis, for sure, getting to his spots, making the reads, you know, myself, you know, being able to make some free throws tonight where I've been pretty terrible at the line. Um, 
you know, and finding my spots, Braun, Kuz, Mark, you know, Trez, you know, everybody's been tailing um, KCP first game back. Um, you know, guys are just finding their, their rhythm and, and, and getting it back going. Um, so it was good to see the ball go through the rim for sure tonight, and we just got to keep it going, you know, knowing that this team is a team who can score, you know, at a high level and, and very quickly. Uh, so it's going to be a tough one, too, as well. Yeah, so you're going to see them again. It's the third time you had San Antonio twice, you had Memphis twice, uh, you get Boogie back again. Uh, there were a couple things he was involved in tonight, uh, your Kentucky guy there. Uh, yeah. What did you see there, and how do you think that transfers over to Tuesday's matchup? Um, you know, two teams won a battle. You know, you know, we battled in, in, in a bubble for a playoff series, and you know, anytime you knock a team out, you know, you know they want to come in and, and win. And you know, we, we take pride in winning on the road. Um, you know, and then, you know, with Boogie, you know, being here last year, <clears throat> uh, it's, first, first off, it's great to see him back on the floor playing well. For the minutes he did play tonight before the ejection, but, uh, you know, a lot of guys are on this side is happy to see him uh, back on the floor and, and doing what he loves to do. But uh, it's always good going against, you know, a former Kentucky guy, him, John, and then, you know, some other guys over there that I also play alongside with, with you know, EJ, uh, well, we call him EJ, but Eric Gordon, um, you know, C. Wood, you know, uh, you know, all those guys that we were able to, um, you know, I had a chance to, to you know, play alongside and, and are really close with. So uh, that was fun. But it's going to be a, another matchup too that, you know, Boogie coming back, you know, we get Marquis back, two guys got ejected, and then, you know, them wanted to beat us and we, you know, wanted to be perfect on the road. So uh, I'm pretty sure Tuesday uh, will be a very interesting game. All right, AD, plus 29 tonight, not too bad. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, Christian Wood for the uh, Houston Rockets said he had this game circled. Anthony Davis knows all his moves. He was very excited to go up against AD. Well, AD had it circled as well. He let everyone know that I did not play in the Bulls game. I am rested and I am ready. And guys, he, he had almost a perfect game, if I can steal a baseball term, uh, going. He was 8 for 8 at one point, James Fish. He, he finished with 27 points. 9 of 12, 6 of 7 in the paint, and shoot well from the free throw line again, 9 for 10. Oh, he had three blocks, too. Yeah, you know, he really asserted himself right away uh, in this basketball game. It, it, it looked uh, fluid. He didn't look to be forcing plays, but he definitely was aggressive to get his offensive rhythm going. Uh, but the, the way they defended to start the game, even though that first quarter was sloppy, I thought their offensive game really came from re playing really active defense, hands in the passing lane. AD got a lot of contests and leak outs for dunks on the other end. I'm just thinking how beneficial, you know, uh, the scheduling might be for AD and LeBron if they're able to rest a game like this and then come back. You know, they had a short turnaround, 71 days. You know, it's going to be, you know, tough playing these cities, being there for four days back to back. So I thought it was I thought it was a cool move to rest him in the Bulls game and then for him to come back super fresh. And I wonder if that's something they might be, you know, looking forward to and use throughout the season. And if you think about it, James, uh, we haven't even got a chance to talk about THT yet, who I, who I can't wait to talk about. But that's the thing. You, you were missing two bench guys in West Matthews. Yeah. and Markeith Morris, and your bench still goes for 54 points. You can have AD sit out a game if he's got the adductor strain, and they're able to fill in, and that's the sign of a great team. Uh, guess what, by the way? Who we got? LeBron James really? is ready to speak. Uh -oh. He's with Mike in the media. Hey, LeBron, what did you notice early, specifically with AD uh, on the defensive end? Uh, any, any evolution from what we've seen in the first couple weeks? No, just AD being AD, and uh, just having it back in the lineup just gives us a whole another dynamic, both offensively and defensively, obviously, and um, it's a good start to the road trip. How different is this matchup with the, the guys that are in and out from the Western Conference semis? Is that just kind of over and done with, and it's a, a new team, new game and uh, when you play Houston? Uh, well, one thing about it, when you play Houston, you got to be ready for that, for that monster in James Harden, no matter what. No matter who's in the lineup for them, no matter what their personnel is, you got to be ready for him because he's capable of beating you by, all by himself, so... You know, we had that mindset and, and, and seeing the health of John Wall back to his uh, speedy self and his uh, effort work. So, um, you know, we just came up with a different mindset to get stops and, and get out and do what we do on the offensive end. And we was able to do that on both sides. Dave? Dave? 
Yeah, I'm here. Uh, LeBron, is there anything in particular about Talon Horton's Tucker's game that, that really stands out to you among all the things that he does? Does it on both sides of the floor. And then he just listens. He's a sponge. You know, whatever you say to him, he's going to apply it. Uh, he's going to accept it first, and then he's going to apply it right away. There's not that many young guys that can uh, take something on the fly and then make it happen the very next play. Uh, you saw it tonight with his ability, obviously, to go uh, seven for eight from the field, but also his rebounding, his assists, playmaking, and then having four steals to add on top of that. So, you know, big time, uh, big time game for him, for, for a kid that's still growing into his own, but um, he's beyond his years. Bill? Hey, LeBron. Um, sorry, I thought I was muted. You might have or be typing or something. Um, I'm wondering if you, you know, how do you, how do you look at this team? I and mean, so much was made last year about your defensive identity on this team. Um, it's obviously completely different guys, but now that you are 11 games into the season, have you gotten a test or have you gotten a taste of what this team can be defensively? Was tonight the best example of, of maybe it is its best? Uh, well, our goal is to be the, the number one defensive team in the league. And um, it's going to take, um, you know, our film sessions. It's going to take our shoot arounds. It's going to take the, the practices when we do get an opportunity to get on the floor and then the games to, to continue to work those habits. Um, you know, we add, like I said, we added five new guys to our rotation this year pretty much in, in, in Trez, uh, Dennis Domenez, Wes, uh, Mark, and, and also Taylor. So, you know, we're, we're all getting accustomed to one another, you know, getting down to our rotations, what we want to build, how we build out from, from the paint to the perimeter. Um, but we want to be the best defensive team in the league, and tonight was a was a, a good start today. Um, last two questions, Kyle. Hey, LeBron. Um, how much did you, did you miss KCP, and what do you think? What what did you feel like he added the most tonight? Uh, one, I mean, obviously shot making ability, um, but his speed, the level of uh, you know acceleration that he plays at automatically ignites our team. Uh, we play at a different pace when he's in the lineup. And uh, his defensive approach as well, being able to guard the other top uh, perimeter uh, player on the other side. Um, and he's a guy who's been in our system. Um, so, um, you know, it's just always great having him out there. Dan? Hey, LeBron. Um, congrats to your Browns. The, uh, I'm trying to jinx him, by the way. I'm going early. I'm on the tail. I wasn't even going to say anything about that. <laughs> um, and after the loss to San Antonio, Anthony was really upset about obviously a lot of stuff, but about defense in particular, and, and was pretty uh, vocal about it. Um, do you like that, that that he kind of challenged you, challenged the team that way? And uh, do do you see that from him often? No, uh, he's a captain. Uh, he's one of the two captains that we have, including myself, and he can voice any opinion um, that he would like, uh, any fact that he like for our ball club. Because one thing about it, whatever he says, he's gonna apply it to himself as well. He holds himself accountable. So when he holds us accountable, we hold him accountable. He holds himself accountable and vice versa. So, you know, AD uh, can say whatever he wants um, because it's all for the betterment of our team. And uh, and we respond to that. So um, we thought it was uh, right on point and we was able to finish that off with a very good defensive game um, against Chicago, even though we didn't score the ball um, like we accustomed to. But and then we followed up tonight with another defensive uh, game. So um, you know, we heard him loud and clear. All right, thank you so much, LJ. 20 to 102, AD 27 and 3 blocks, THT 17 and 4, LeBron James with 18, 7 and 7. What a night for the Lakers. 13 steals, 8 blocks, 21 rocket turnovers. D Fish, we talked about you throwing wood on somebody. Look what you do in the big board. Go look at look at the big screen. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Skull was, was messing with our guy Luke. Yeah, that was a little Argentinian embellishment. <laughs> I don't know. You hit him square. <laughs> I, I I did. And you missed a game for this in the playoff series. Yeah, I did. But it set the tone, didn't it, Fish? Uh, I would like Fish to think so. Focus. I would like to think so. You know, Frazier goes down. You know, guys were. <laughs> what? Okay, but at that time it was very necessary. Sometimes. You gotta lay. You, you you have to. You have to send a message. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Sometimes you do. And they were, uh, you know, teams used to talk to certain guys on our team yeah. because they couldn't talk to Kobe that way. Yep. You know, they didn't talk to other guys that way. And not gonna talk to Meta that way. You know, he was, he was talking a little bit <laughs> too Peter. much. I wonder we could have. A demo, Briz. Yeah. So, so, no. so, I'm already Briz, having a bad enough Briz, night. Your defense come on, man. Be a team player. We need to reenact that. Briz, come set a screen. I'll set. Come on. I don't want any part of these right here. <laughs>
defense. Come on, Brad. You got that defense. I'm going to stay on my mark. Brad, you might as well go lower. I'm going to stay. You saw the score at halftime. I'm going to stay socially Brez. distanced. Brad, you saw the Brown Steelers score. We're going to set it up for the next segment. Yeah, yeah we set that up. We're going to do a whole demo. That'd be amazing. Skull is a big dude, too. He floored him. Oh, fish. man. Yeah, he's, he's from Argentina, though, man. He, you know, he, yeah. he put the little FIBA soccer. Right, you get it, right, right. you know? <laughs> Hi, I mean, we welcome okay, you though. in. Hi, Brez. Thank How you. are you? What the? Oh, this is a great night. I, I don't know where to, where to start. <laughs> Every stat just seems great. So what kind of AD, what sticks out for you? Yeah, I like what AD did. All right, you know, it's funny. Obviously, Houston, uh, last season, when, when AD got after them in the playoffs, different team. You know, Mike D'Antoni, small ball. They started with a guy who was 6'7 in the front court, Robert Covington, and a guy who was 6'5 in P.J. Tucker. New team this year. We've got Christian Wood, you know, a, a young, legit big man. The Marcus Cousins coming off the bench. I mean, AD is not doing this against last year's Houston team. He's doing this against a very good, uh, a good enough anyway, uh, interior defense to go 8 of 8 when he missed his first shot halfway through that third quarter. 21-footer, if I remember. Uh, strong, strong game for him for sure. I think we're just not surprised by THT anymore. We saw this in the bubble yeah. last year against this Rockets team. But he just continues to take advantage of the minutes. James, he's fun. Fans love him. And what LeBron said was so spot on when they asked what sticks out. He said he does it on both ends. And he's a young guy that listens, takes the feedback, and applies. At 20 years old, this guy's an old soul. You've said it before, big game, James. And, man, he can play. He gets buckets. But he also gets steals, assists, everything, James. Career high 17. Well, I, I, I think the key thing that came out of that interview was that young players that listen. You know, that's hard for young players to do. They have a lot of talent. They're willing to show. But when you listen, and it seems like he takes it to practice and, you know, works on whatever he's been told, he seems like he, he corrects his mistakes quickly. And the guy can play, man. Seven of eight. Four steals, Geeter. Four steals in this game. And, you know, he doesn't show a lot of emotion. He just plays the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think he's, he's going to be an incredible asset because Fish talked about matchups in pregame. You know, when, when, when you have a guy like Tucker who can play guard, who can defend, who has those, those long arms and can steal and can shoot the three and extremely patient on offense. He gets in the paint. He takes his time, pump fakes, gets a lot of layups. Uh, he's 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 just uh, you know I didn't know I didn't know he had all that but the kid from uh, Iowa State man he's he's got a game fish you know who's not surprised by what he's doing THT THT <laughs> as he told Tony Allen last year in a G League game I don't belong here yeah like he has this confidence it, it's not a uh, I'm all about myself it's just he he has a belief in what he's doing he's not surprised no and I but I do think he's a different guy than he was last season hundred percent right uh, before. You know, both the NBA and the WNBA went to their respective bubbles, uh, two different bubbles. I'll, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> THT was training with some of his teammates. And I was training with some of our players on the other side of the gym. Yes. And at that time, THT was still developing his body into what it is now. Yes. Right? And seeing the difference in where his fitness was, his strength and conditioning, He's a different player, and the reason why I am not surprised is because I saw the guy putting in the work. Saw he put the time in with Phil Handy. He put the time in with his teammates, and this is the result of it. No shortcuts to being great in this league, and I'm happy that the work is paying off for him, and he's seeing the results. Yeah, keep in mind the Lakers did not have a draft pick in 2019. They'd already traded the first rounder for, for AD. Bought into that second round, 46th overall, gave up a couple million and a future second round draft pick. And this is what they came up with. Good job by the Lakers scouting department and the front office as well for saying, let's buy in and, and take a chance on this guy. Hey, guys, real quick. Uh, special props. Our producer, B. Moore, he just returned. His beautiful back. wife, Sam. They had their <laughs> second baby boy. It seemed like he's been gone for two years, right? He took a long time, but he is back. And he just produced his best segment of, of his career. Too long to have Welcome, back. Welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. a long time off, dude. Poor Get daddy. back to work. Be more. Like you, you can't argue with that assist, although that, that left hand LeBron, you all know how hard that is to do. LeBron's like, like that, hold my drink. <laughs> Two things trending. Get the, uh, <laughs> Big Ben and Goat to Goat. Thanks to you. Goat to Goat. Yeah, you got it. Lakers win by 18, remain undefeated on the road. Frank Vogel speaking with Mike and the media via Zoom.
Hey, Frank, uh, AD had had the, the comments about not being satisfied after the San Antonio game about defense. Just wonder what you noticed about him, especially in the first quarter, and if you thought that uh, kind of sparked the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if uh, his motivation was about that San Antonio game, but, you know, obviously when you speak out on uh, wanting our group to be, uh, you know, to be better, you know, I think, um, you know, you want to own up to your own words and make sure that, that, that you're, you're uh, solid as well. And, you know, he that, that whole first group, I think, really set a tone on the defensive end. I think getting K KCP back, um, you know, I thought he had three steals in the first quarter. My, one of them must have been a deflection and, you know, got a, didn't get credit for it. But, um, you know, he had three forced turnovers in the first, uh, first few minutes, got out on the break. AD was really good. The whole group was really good in that first quarter and set a tone for the whole night. Craig, the offense has mostly been there, it seems like, through the, the first 10 games. Uh, and defense, certainly at times. But was it? did you like seeing the evolution of it and kind of molding those two sides together tonight? Yeah, it's a, it's a balancing act. You know, uh, some nights the offense is going to be there, some nights the defense. You know, I, I've got a lot of confidence in, in this team on the defensive end. You know, it, it, we've had some, some nights where, you know, we were steps slow to certain things and still learning coverages and whatnot. But, um, you know, I think we're going to be good there. You know, we just got to be a team that buys into uh, being a team first uh, team offensively and, and continuing to trust the pass. We had 28 assists tonight. Uh, that was a big part of it, and you know this this game is as much as any uh, throughout the year was uh, was a Laker basketball type of win. You know, flying around defensively and getting stops without fouls, uh, either forcing turnovers or forcing misses, and then flying on the break. You know, and, and getting out and you know the deep advance passes. Um, you know, got us 32 fast break points. So, um, you know, sort of an, an identity win. Bill. Hey, Frank, uh, aside from the obvious, you know, not having the rim protection necessarily that you had last year, what is the biggest adjustment you've had to make defensively with this group? How, what's the biggest adjustment you've had to make in terms of how you coach this defense from a year ago? Um, we haven't really adjusted too much, to be honest. Um, we're just really, uh, you know, just getting everybody tied together with, uh, with the schemes. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the new guys learning what we're doing, and, you know, we <laughs> – we finished up last year defensively very different than the way we started. We grew throughout the year with our package and, and arsenal of, of schemes that we can throw at different teams. And you know, I think the biggest challenge this year is to uh, not overcomplicate our schemes uh, in these early regular season games. It's, it's easy, especially against a team like Portland or, or Houston, who we played multiple games in the playoffs last year, uh, to, to go to all your plan B, plan C, plan D. Uh, types of coverages and um, you know the, there's a risk of, of being too complicated for a you know a, a, a one game regular season a type of night so um, you know we're, we're striking that we're, you know, we're striking that balance um, you know, but I feel good about what we're doing on what we're doing on that end of the floor Kyle hey Frank um, what do you think it is about KCP that it seems like have, adding him back to the group, obviously his statistical contributions stand out, but it seems like he, he's a little bit more than the sum of his parts, so to speak. Like when when your team has him, it, it's more complete. Do you do you sense that about him? Yeah, I, I do. He, you know, he really, we're, we're a big team. You know, I mean, we have, uh, we play with great size. We have size. And, you know, to, to play with that type of size, you need speed to complement it. And, you know, his speed and athleticism, is invaluable to us. Um, and then you add what he can do defensively, has the ability to shoot the ball on the perimeter. Um, you know, he's really a, a one of our best players and an important part of what we're doing. <laughs> you know what time it is, don't you? Do it, can Fish is focus. <laughs> Look at the lights. It's like a light show going on around here. <laughs> Music. Just trying to take the light off the shine on look, my dome. Look at, them. <laughs> look at, look at the music. They're trying to do. Look at those guns on the wall. <laughs> look at the pipes. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> presenting <laughs> Fishes Focus. <laughs> Segment over. <laughs> the segment is over. We, live up to we that, do not fish. need any more content. <laughs> I wish I could have seen you. <laughs> oh, my God. 
That was, okay. Let's go, uh, baby. Man, I, told, I forgot else, what. Again. Be more. I forgot which plays we're about to watch. And oh man. I, I know my mind is. Oh my man. Mind is just, okay. It's just scrambled. Um, but no, Lakers defense and and the length. As you see, the arrow going straight oh. up. Anthony Davis' <laughs> hands are down, but when his arms go up, he contests the shot. And what he does a lot is. He contests and immediately leaks out to the other end. And the Lakers, they practice this regularly. They look long for the outlet pass. LeBron doing a good job there on the weak side, being in his backside responsibilities in the tandem on the screen roll. Out in front again for easy finish. KCP, good active hands in the passing lanes. Guards using high hands in pick and roll situations is really key. Montrez staying vertical so that you do not pick up the foul. And then immediately LeBron turns the corner. KCP gathers himself. Nice finish there. And then again in screen roll, AD doing a good job. Christian Wood isn't a great three-point shooter, but AD still makes the effort to contest the shot, which encourages the miss. <clears throat> and then he leaks out. He was really about the great Lakers defense. Uh, they got out to a lot of easy baskets. But uh, the effort on the defensive end is really what separated this game. That breakdown deserves all of this. <laughs> and you forgot no, the plays and then came right back to you. Something you said, though, earlier today, I thought. Rockets got the Lakers' attention. Yes. There was a different Laker team. I think they were sick of kind of the slow starts, James. But the Rockets, team, you know, James Harden, John Wall, Boogie. You got to take it to them. Yeah. I mean, you have to make statements in, 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 this, in this game. I mean, uh, Houston was... Tough in the bubble last year, scoring a lot of points this year. Yeah, that'll put you on notice. And so I think, you know, that's what the championship teams do. They recognize what they're about to go up against before they hit the court. And they were prepared for it. I mean, their defense was off the heezy, as some, some of these young kids say. Uh, but uh, but it, it was just outstanding to see them come prepared for it. And they were ready at, at, at all points. All right, guys, more to come on. Uh, y'all gonna let me? Y'all gonna let me do that? That introduction? That introduction? Dude, that was, I, I like doing. Because by the way, I think there needs to be a camera on you in the corner over there. You want to do it one more time? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Fishes Focus. I like that. Man, one thousand percent. That's what we're doing. I got to get a uniform now. When are you back? Big game. When are you back? You're going to put that in the can, though. You should not have to strain your voice like that anymore. When are you back? That's it. Okay. When are you back? Uh, Wednesday. That's See you on Wednesday. Time. That's the last time, Fish. THT, 17 points, four steals. Those are career highs, by the way. And he did it in just 21 minutes. He's now speaking with Mike. Hey, Taylor, LeBron was just uh, talking about your game, and he said that uh, he thinks you're a sponge uh, and that you've just been kind of soaking up what uh, you've been learning, whether from him or anybody in the team, and then try applying it. Uh, what What is your mindset towards that, and how has that gone for you the last uh, couple of years now? Uh, you know, I always say I just want to learn, so I feel like, you know, being a sponge is the most important thing you have to do, you know, when you're learning, especially with guys, you know, uh, the, the caliber guys that we have, so. Uh, just being a sponge has probably you know, been a, you know, a key to you know, I mean, doing good things this year. Yeah, you had the four steals in this one. A couple of them came in that fourth quarter. What, what is it that you're noticing on the defensive end that you're able to be aggressive uh, and look for turnover, turnovers like that? Uh, I'm just trying to be aggressive and uh, you know, not reach too much and just reach at the right times. And uh, just, you know, just pick my spots kind of on defense. Uh, you know, as the you know, year goes on, you know, it's long, so things, things are going to always be different. So just trying to you know, stay strong on that end is going to be good for me. Uh, Brad? How you doing, Dylan? I'm good. How are you? Good. Can, can you feel yourself? Uh, can you sense that you're growing and developing and getting better every time you're out there playing? And what's that feel like? I'm, I'm really just doing what I love to do. So I really don't really kind of look at it like that. I'm just playing basketball. So I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to do what I want, what I love to do. So I'm going to go out there and, you know, just try and compete to the fullest. And I, I just do what I know how to do. Kyle. Jalen, uh, last year with South Bay, you had sort of a pretty under good understanding of night to night, how, how much you'd be playing, what your role was. Today, you know, you, you played some games with, you know, six minutes, some games like tonight, 20 minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you say that again? Yeah, you, you played a variety of, of minutes and, and roles depending on the night. Um, how are you getting used to 
sort of not knowing necessarily how how much you're going to play on a given night? Uh, just, you know, always being ready. You know, I feel like if you prepare yourself for the moment, you don't have to prepare yourself when you're actually in it. So I feel like, you know, just always trying to stay ready and just paying attention to, the, you know, the guys that are out there before me. And, uh, you know, just being able to come in and, you know, stay ready is going to be, you know, for a, a long year like this is something I'm going to have to do, you know, on a daily basis. Dave? Taylor, in uh, Major League Baseball, for young players who are late season call ups, they had to meet a eligibility threshold to be considered a rookie. Uh, you didn't play all that much last year. I think only six games. Do you think the NBA could explore something like that, where you have to play X amount of games to have it be considered your rookie year? Because obviously, if you continued to play this way, you may be. You, had this been your rookie year, you'd be probably be eligible for some of the the rookie teams and that type of consideration. Uh, well, you know, I feel like uh, everything happens for a reason. You know, guys are playing, so I'm not really knocking on anything like that. So I feel like, you know, just, you know, I'm here in this position for a reason. So I just feel like I'm just trying, you know, fulfill it to the most. Let's go inside the numbers brought to you by Lexus. 120 to 102 dominant performance for the Lakers. 10 to 29 for three. Out rebounded the Rockets by six. They had 28 assists. Dominance, Brez, what's sticking out to you? You know, I think the fast break points. Isn't Houston supposed to be the team with this good backcourt between John Wall and James Harden and Christian Wood kind of filling the lanes like you used to back in the day, James? Not the case tonight. A lot of turnovers for Houston, a lot of easy buckets for the Lakers. I think you're right. I think you mentioned it a few minutes ago, guys. I think the Lakers kind of got tired of these slow starts. You know, had a couple in Memphis. They were down double digits. Had a, had a storm back to win that game. Another one against San Antonio. And... Uh, not tonight. They, they were in it from the start. No doubt about that. More to come. Um, really called out the defense. Uh, and, and I'm wondering how much of that was you wanting to um, hold yourself accountable? And, and then how did you feel like you and the team overall responded to that um, tonight? Um, it was holding myself accountable mainly, but also holding the team. Uh, we got a lot of guys who... It was really good defensively, and we know how good we can be. We know how good we want to be, um, and it wasn't showing in the previous games. And tonight we came out very aggressive defensively. Um, I think it was like 13 blocks, eight steals, or something like that, and just just being more active with our hands, being more active uh, with our bodies. And um, you know, first half holding a team like that to 46 points, a team who can score at will. Um, so we just. You know, just wants to dig in a little deeper on the defensive end and make sure that, uh, you know, we start picking up the defensive intensity and, and you know, start being a defensive team that we know we can be. Dan? Hey, Eddie. Um, Christian Wood said that this was a game that he had circled on his calendar. Um, I'm curious, do you hear stuff like that? Um, is that something that, uh, and, and kind of what do you think when you hear something like that? Uh, I'll just go out there and play basketball. Um, you know, I don't think it was, you know, anything crazy. I know Seawood, we played in New Orleans uh, together. Um, and it was a guy who's always kind of leaned on me for, you know, helping the league and, um, you know, working with him when I was in New Orleans on, on some moves and stuff. So um, I didn't see it. I heard it. I heard about it. Um, didn't know it was true or not, but, you um, I look at it no no type of way. I just went out there and just just played basketball. To be honest, you know one thing, big game, James. This Laker team's five and zero on the road, and the crazy thing about the schedule now is kind of beat up this Rockets teams, and now you got to play them again. <laughs> yeah. Right? Hard to do, by the yeah. way. Hard to hard to hard to beat a team back to back. They make adjustments. They have redemption on their mind because it's coming back. But the Lakers will have to, uh, that's going to be their challenge, you know, in the bubble for everyone. Yeah. Playing these back to back games like this. Some fun games in there. You got uh, Rockets, you got uh, Steph coming to town, you got Bucks. Yeah, definitely some fun games. I, yeah. I like the two game set, though. I think it, you know, typically during the season, you don't get that playoff like experience yeah. until the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where you go to town, Adjust. you're there for five to six days. Yeah, you have to make those adjustments in between the game. That opponent's going to come back. You beat them that, that game, they're coming back to get you the next one. Uh, so I think that'll be a good experience. And then 
uh, you know, a lot of people will see if the strength and schedule kind of changes, uh, you know, how well the Lakers are playing right now. You know what I'm hearing from Fish? He wanted to be able to open that suitcase in Charlotte and take his clothes out for a few days. <laughs> Maybe have a meal. Pull that little thing out Not of the closet Charlotte and put that quite. down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe Chicago or something. Chicago, New York.